world domination plan map over here. <laughs> <laughs> Three, two, one. Good afternoon. Welcome. Welcome to a new chapter of Beards and Beers. And today we have a very special guest. With us, we have Mohammed Awad. I would like him to do the intro. You will get really impressed of this new guest for this new season. Huh? I manage ARM's IoT and embedded business. Um, so we, uh, we, we go after everything from the little uh, the littlest sensor and getting that online all the way through to kind of edge uh, servers and everything kind of in between. So, you know, everything from storage controllers to, um, to IoT devices falls within my, my team's group. Awesome. Excellent. So we've been seeing Todd that he has some of his projects around seedling and playing with IoT. So now we are connecting his projects to the guys that are doing designs around IoT. Um, we would be curious about, you recently announced something coming out to the market. What's that about? Yeah, so we uh, we announced ARM Total Solutions for IoT, which is it's really cool because, you know, if you think about IoT, it's incredibly fragmented space. There's... um. You know, uh, you know, ARM has shipped 70 billion microcontrollers to date with, you know, 70 billion microcontrollers have shipped with ARM-based technology and then they sort of make up the foundation of IoT and they go into all sorts of different IoT devices from, you know, fridges to, you know, um, thermometers on your wall to industrial controllers. Um, so massively diverse. And, and what ARM Total Solutions does is it looks to, to effectively scale that and really change the IoT economy and drive um, really as more simplified way for software development to occur on a lot of those devices, kind of three main, main pieces to it. So I know this is kind of a going off topic already, but one of the things that I was thinking about is, as you were talking there, and it's something that I always think about is uh, when you think about ARM, at least from, from my perspective, uh, one of the things that always comes to mind very, very early on is the low cost of ARM, ARM chips, whether you're talking about, like you said, uh, IoT devices or refrigerators or you know whatever else they're embedded within, uh, and, and now moving though to the cloud, we're seeing a lot of companies, a lot of providers shift to ARM-based servers. Um, how do you keep those costs down? How how is it possible that these chips are are so affordable compared to the competitors? Yeah, and yet performant. Yeah, yeah, and and so. You know, at the end of the day, ARM is a, uh, you know, we provide, you know, IP and solutions to the ecosystem, but the real strength of ARM is the ecosystem, you know, um, so total chips shipped to date is over 200 billion now. And, and that's not like we shipped 200 billion chips, our ecosystem shipped 200 billion chips. For us, it's about providing sort of those core designs uh, into the ecosystem. And then you've got a vast ecosystem of silicon partners and OEMs who then take them and make all sorts of different, you know, unique products and services. And that's what makes it so unique is that, you know, we're not innovating in all those different areas. We, we're creating a base design and then the ecosystem has got the freedom to go off and figure out how to optimize them for certain use cases and applications and workloads. And that's why they span everything from that little sensor all the way to the, you know, the cloud data center and even HPC, right? Um, because people have taken those designs and then configured them or, you know, scale them up to support lots of different cores and really high performance in one case, or, you know, really focused on low power design in another case. That, that's really the, the way that we, we support that breadth. And the key really for us, and, and this is what Total Solutions is all about, is like, how do you enable that level of innovation and diversity while still um, preserving and, and, uh, and also um, embracing a level of software leverage? Because at the end of the day, the hardware is there really to serve a lot of the software, whether whether we you know whether us hardware folks like to believe it or not. And so, um, but I started as a software guy, so I guess it's, it's a, you know I'm not speaking too far out of school. But but it's really there to serve a lot of the, the software. And so you know, um, lowering the cost of developing for those devices means creating a level of commonality in the platform, so you can get leverage and apply your software to lots of different places helping people optimize things like development tools so that they've got, you know, um, you know, streamlined tools. And that's where a lot of the, a lot of the emphasis for us is, in, and frankly, what Total Solutions, a lot of what Total Solutions is about. It looks like this solution is shortening the product life cycle 
from once you get the prototype out to be in production, we know that usually it has been like five years, even more to get something real out there. It looks like you are dramatically decreasing that shortened by putting the cloud as the space where you can now develop your solution. Yeah, yeah, no, that's exactly right. Um, you know, in fact, if you uh, if you think about it, um, what what happens is there's really three parts to total solutions. The first part is um, ARM Corestone. ARM Corestone is all about a a, um, a an IP reference platform that we provide into our silicon partners, who then can take that and quickly get their their silicon to market. So it accelerates how quickly they can take out. So that shrinks their design time, and that that foundation that we put forward, that core stone, which is basically the basic configuration of, of IP is then used, we create a virtual model of that and we put that in the cloud so that software developers don't have to wait for the silicon to be available. They can just start writing software at the same time we release the IP. So now instead of waiting for two years for the newest technologies to come to market, they can just start, you know, and they can not only start, but they can then go do things like, you know, CI, CD and kind of modern development flows, which you know, historically it hasn't been the purview of embedded developers, right? Because they, they have to deal with hardware farms uh, if they don't have this. And then the third piece of it, which is accelerating, is, is what we call Project Centauri. And Project Centauri is all about like, hey, if you develop software for a given um, IoT device, today you have to report that start with software and kind of start over every time you move to a new piece of hardware. That's, you know, there's an incredible amount of inefficiency on that. I sort of equate it to smartphones, which like, like if you think about a smartphone, there's something like 3 million smartphone apps out there and thousands of different phones. Could you imagine if every app developer had to buy every smartphone and port their app to every smartphone before they could really, I mean, that's what happens in IoT today, right? So Total Solutions is about kind of fixing those problems. Well, that's, that's kind of like how it was in the early days of mobile development. I mean, you, you had to get all those devices and physically test them. And, and if you had an issue or a bug, and you didn't have that device at, on hand, it was just insane. And now we have these emulators and, and all this, these remote debugging abilities. And uh, this it's it's all about tools. And, and I, I've been thinking so much about tools lately uh, from my perspective and from my role and how I use tools even in my job as a developer advocate. But tools, I think the older I get and the more I, I'm around this industry, tooling is just the heart of this industry. Uh, it's so important, and without good tools, I mean, any any mechanic, any any carpenter would tell you the same thing. I mean, if without your tools, you're nothing, and and uh, productivity and enjoyment even of of our job, I think, is so dependent on our tools and our ecosystem. Uh, so I applaud you for for focusing on that, and I'm sure it's making both you know uh, engineers designing these systems as well as the developers. Uh, life's a lot easier. Um, are you able to integrate like all peripherals and memory and and and, and bandwidth and all that stuff? You're able to to emulate all of that. So in the initial instance, what we're doing is we've got kind of virtualized, um, you know, basically I/O drivers so that you can go off and and you know use those virtualized drivers to drive different stimuli. And in the first uh, in the first um, on virtual hardware that we have out there, we specifically focus on like audio drivers because we've got a, you know, ML is a big, a big, you know, thing happening right now in IoT. And so, you know, we, we, uh, we put a, um, a wake word engine out there as well. And so you can kind of done the audio driver piece of it. But to answer your question, the way that it's designed is that those virtual um, IOs can be augmented and built upon. And so what, 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 what we're doing in conjunction with the ecosystem is we're looking at expanding out all those IOs so that they start to look more and more like the actual IOs that exist on the old chip. So, you know, this is this is the start of a journey, right? This isn't like, uh, hey, we released this thing and now we're done. This is like we've started this and it's really about capturing, again, you know, 70 billion uh, M-class devices out there, you know, um, thousands of different, uh, you know, microcontrollers. And, and it's really about, you know, Arm is really the only company that is is in a position to help defragment that, and so that's really what we're starting to do as part of the process, right? And it's the right timing because now with the five G that is coming, and we're going to start enabling faster networks, more data points captured from all these sensors, IoT devices. I think there's a bunch of new services products that will be see coming in the next couple of years. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I completely agree with you. And and what's interesting too is like if you think, and I think, you know, 
I think it was Todd that was talking about like, hey, that's how stop development was kind of done in the um, in the mobile space before. Like it, it was, it was kind of you develop for one device and that was it. And then what happened was you kind of moved to these, you know, these larger companies that had multiple phones. And so they started writing apps, which would be kind of look the same across multiple phones. That's the kind of stage we're in now with the IoT. So you have some kind of big OEMs that are, you know, have multiple devices and they're starting to blow it, you know, services that look kind of the same across lots of devices. Where we really need to get to is the same place the smartphone industry got to, which is like, you know, you've got, you know, some, some big developers who are developing some unique products which get deployed on lots of different hardware that they may never see or touch, right? And that, you know, that creates a sort of matrix of, of, of complexity, which is pretty, pretty high. And, and what we're trying to do on virtual hardware to solve that. I think it's going to be interesting on that data mesh, the logical abstraction of how we index and categorize the information from your IoT devices. Yeah, I mean, that's a whole other problem, which I know you guys are working on at Oracle. And it is, it is you know, a challenge is, is, is getting that, you know, what are you going to do with all that data? How do you then go manage that data as it comes in? You know, and, and sort of, and it's it's sort of the, the key is going to be figuring out what type of local intelligence and inference do you need in order to establish what's the, you know, what data is important that we got to, you know, bring back and manage and how do we deal with it versus, you know, is there stuff that we can drop on the floor and we don't have to worry about it. So so how can people check out Arm Total Solutions in, in this, uh, this project today? Um, so, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. So like I said, there's three parts to it. These, um, so, I mean, the short answer is go to our website and there's a bunch of information, you know, on Arm's website. But you know, the, uh, there's a software SDK, which is, um, which is really all about Project Centauri. That's available on our GitHub, which you can check out. And then um, we also, the, the actual IP and the core stone reference design for Silicon Partners, they can get, we have this ARM flexible access program. They can get it there. Or they can just license that directly. And then the, um, the, the actual ARM virtual hardware in, the, in our first instance, we've made it available as, a, uh, as an AMI on, on AWS, but we're expanding that to uh, to lots of different um, you know cloud providers, and we'll even work with people directly if they want to they want to get, make it available directly. And so we're kind of in the process of kind of working through that now. Any um, any plans working with OCI or Oracle to, to get I'd that? I'd love up to. Uh, who do we talk to? Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Absolutely. Well, geez, the man with all the connections. So uh, we'll, we'll get you we'll get you hooked up. We'll cool. connect. Yeah, because I'm really interested on in, in this new solution. I think it's a bit of a game changer as you mentioned, of consolidating and providing a single space where everybody can work. Yeah. Is there any area of exploration out of what we already know about mobiles, uh, connected cars and things like that, that you think that will get more traction as this solution is getting adopted in the industry? I think like ML ops and just enabling DevOps is gonna be the biggest place where we see traction immediately. ML ops specifically, and that really spans a lot. There's a lot of industrial automation that, you know, that's loaded into that. But, and, and the reason why I say that is if, if you think about what's happening today is like, you've got all these ML developers who are just not embedded developers, right? Like they kind of just think about the world in a different way, which is, which is great. And, but they have a way of doing things that they've been doing for, you know, um, and doing successfully in the cloud. And really what we're talking about here is bringing that same model of development to them. And so, I actually think you're going to see a bunch of innovation around driving intelligence down to the endpoints that you maybe wouldn't have seen otherwise. And industrial automation, I think, is going to be a big, big beneficiary of that. I can think of some solutions like the OCI Robin, which is our portable cloud, connecting yep. directly in the edge and doing all the machine learning, image recognition and stuff direct, and then using right. the cloud to process any other work. You know? That's right. That's right. Huge uh, things coming. I'm really excited. And I'm really happy having you on board. Yeah, that's very cool. Well, I appreciate you taking the time uh, out of your busy schedule. Uh, I know this is a huge, huge uh, time for you and a huge uh, launch of this awesome uh, platform. So uh, we definitely appreciate you joining us. And uh, thanks for, for skipping the shave this morning. And uh, I did. <laughs> when the team, you know, I figured what the heck. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Uh, very cool. Guys, we really appreciate it. I really appreciate you guys taking the time. Thank you.